So I just wanted to make a quick video. Uh, this week I'm traveling for work, but I can't help but gloat a little bit here uh, after making a DLSS video one week ago where I talked about how um, basically if Final Fantasy 15 and I forgot the synthetic benchmark they used, it was the one with like the assassin in the futuristic setting who uses the invisible camera thing it was kind of a cool demo but i, I hate synthetic benchmarks because they don't prove absolutely anything um and tech spot did an analysis where they found that uh, and that's what i talked about a lot that 1800p with taa um got you the same if not better results than using dlss and 4k and i made the argument that anyone saying it will get better is delusional because nvidia would put their best foot forward they would not put it, you know, they would not put their worst foot forward unless it was a some weird mistake. So think about it, right? And now we're seeing the results with Battlefield 5 and Metro Exodus, where DLSS looks horrible. Absolutely horrible. <laughs> TechSpot did not, hardware unboxed, did not hold back giving them shit on this one. And, and I looked, uh, you know, I couldn't tell at first because, frankly, YouTube just compresses videos too much. But I looked really closely and it then it became apparent that, like, instead of using DLSS and 4K, just run the game in goddamn 1440p. It looks horrible. And so I'm gloating right now a little bit that I was completely right, that this is what you should expect. I know NVIDIA says they're going to improve it, but mm -mm. And this actually kind of reminds me, and I fell into this camp of being overly optimistic about Vega when they showed Doom Gaming at, like, 65 frames and then Battlefront uh, gain, right? I think it was Battlefront 1 or 2, and it was getting like 70 frames, and that made it look like it was maybe slightly stronger than a 1080. And everyone said, oh, there's no way that's true. But looking back on it, AMD would only put their best foot forward. They would not show Vega 20% weaker than it was going to end up being, right? Because really they wanted to challenge the 1080 Ti if they could, but they couldn't. And so everyone should have taken notice back then. And people should have taken notice with DLSS when it arguably didn't work in its best setting a synthetic benchmark and a final fantasy 15 a game where the aa is horrible um compared to other games that if it didn't seem to improve anything that th it was absolutely a ridiculous uh idea to say that it would get better over time and now we're seeing it it looks worse than just running the game at a lower resolution and you get worse performance right if you just ran the game in 1440p in battlefield it probably looks slightly better than running 4k dlss and you'll get higher frame rates and metro exodus <laughs> All I've seen is that it looks like complete dog shit. And, and I, I have nothing else to say besides that. And it's not going to get better, people. It isn't. And, and this is um, the second half of the video I really want to touch on. Ray tracing. Why does it work at such horrible frame rates? Why would NVIDIA do this? Or DLSS. Why would they push this feature that clearly sucks? And I'm going to tell you why. NVIDIA made Maxwell. This was their... Um, Sandy Bridge moment, as I call it for NVIDIA, where they, you could argue maybe they were a little ahead of AMD before, but not really. But then they came out with Maxwell and it was game over. It was game over. It was just completely game over. In fact, it was worse than Sandy Bridge, if you ask me. It'd be like if Intel came out with Skylake um, out of nowhere, uh, right? I guess the only difference being that AMD has a good architecture with GCN and Bulldozer was a bag of shit. But again, my point is, Maxwell is a gaming architecture. It came out to gaming first. And then they upgraded it to, uh, I'm sorry, and then they brought it to compute, but only for like really specific, like FP16 use cases. And it came way after their gaming cards. And it's because the, um, what do I want to say? The Kepler compute cards, you know, the ones with D, with um, higher compute modes enabled, were way better than Maxwell at extra precision compute. And that was not the case with Maxwell. They stripped out everything that wouldn't help gaming and they threw it at gaming. And they only brought it to the compute market because they were like, well, there's some FP, right, 16 use cases or 32 use cases where Maxwell's so efficient it might work out well. So we'll bring this to the market. And the same with Pascal, which is basically just slightly upgraded Maxwell tweak to be able to clock super high. And that's gaming. So it was obvious they needed another Fermi. Uh, 
And that's what Turing is. It is Fermi 2.0. This is a compute architecture. These, you know, <laughs> DLSS tensor cores are not meant for DLSS. They're meant for AI workloads. These cards were built with a third of their die for AI. That's it. They, there was the, in the designing of Turing, there was no thought, oh, we could use it for this one game. No, it was all about AI, and the RT cores were really there to guide compute workloads, kind of in a similar manner to asynchronous compute, which is no surprise that Turing is incredibly good at asynchronous compute, probably better than, frankly, Vega is. Maybe not Vega 20, but certainly better than Vega 14 nanometer when you see it blowing it away in Wolfenstein 2. And that's because Turing is a compute architecture. Right, and it's a 750 millimeter square die for the 2080 Ti, which is really a cut down compute card. Again, the compute versions of the cards came out first. It's a compute architecture. Maxwell gaming cards came out first. It's a gaming architecture. Same with Vega. The compute cards came out to Vega first. It was obviously meant for compute and they sold it to gamers because they could and that's what Nvidia is doing with Turing. What am I saying? Don't expect a lot out of ray tracing. Don't expect a lot out of DLSS. They are secondhand ideas meant to prop up selling. Ups. Again, Turing are the biggest die sizes we've ever seen in graphics cards. Every previous generation stopped at about 600 millimeter squared, usually actually about 500 millimeter squared cards. But NVIDIA worked with TSMC to make a larger ridicule so they can make 850 millimeter squared Theoretically, I don't think they made any card that big. Titan V was 815 millimeter squared. They worked with TSMC to make 12 nanometer cards that could get over 800 millimeter squared. Never been done before. Never had a die size that big. And it's because their idea was to have this multi-sectioned compute card that is Turing. And that's what it was built for. And then they said, hey, AMD is so far behind us. There's no point in us bothering making Maxwell 4.0, which is what would have been an iteration of Pascal with maybe a little bit of the compute to help it out. But they didn't go with that. They said, there's no point. We're ahead of AMD. We don't need to. So they created, and this is the part of the video everyone should really pay attention to. They, my point is they created DLSS. They created ray tracing to convince you that it's worth spending $1,200 for their mega graphics card that has a die size 20%. 30% bigger than any die before it. They're just, you know, throwing it out there so that they can justify why they use such a big die for a gaming card. If it was up to NVIDIA, and you're seeing this with the 660 Ti, which will be as strong as a 1070 while probably having a smaller die size, and yet look how well it performs. And that's because they stripped out all the stupid shit. <laughs> it's really that simple. Um, and... Stop hoping for these Turing features to become good. I mean, ray tracing will be pretty here and there. I wouldn't be surprised if there was like one game that used ray tracing in a way that didn't just kill performance. But ray tracing, DLSS, whatever shit they shove out the next year, it's all there secondhand. They made a compute architecture and then they say, how are we going to sell these compute portions of the card to gamers so they pay us more? And they came up with a bunch of buzzwords. That's what Turing is. Stop being surprised and they did it because they knew they could get away with it because amd is behind right now amd won't be behind in two years or three years but they're still behind all right just had to make this video quick uh like subscribe please share with you know people and let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below thank you